Ernest Becker wrote a book called The Denial of Death, which we will be discussing today. We will be discussing the key ideas of this book. But uh, I must warn you that many people find this work to be very dark and straightforward. Uh, some of the things that Ernest discusses in this book are quite eye-opening eye and uh, mind-rattling too. So, without further ado, let us get into it. The argument that this book holds is that our fear of death is the most fundamental problem of humanity. Ernest claims that humans have to face this conflicting truth that man has a symbolic identity, that he is a symbolic self, a creature with a name, a life story uh, that has the ability to comprehend the cosmos and atoms and abstract concepts such as infinity. But on the other side, man is also worm food. His life is objectively meaningless and he will one day rot and disappear forever and that this is a terrifying dilemma. And a terrifying dilemma it is because we are so equipped with all this knowledge, with a mind so aware and conscious that it is able to comprehend such complex abstract concepts. But on the other hand, despite all this complexity within us, we are going to die. And with all you have, you can do nothing about it. The world is meaningless. Your life is meaningless. You're going to die and rot. You're going to be nothing forever. So how are you Going to come to terms with that is the question. And this conflict between being abstract thinkers, this powerful sentient being that we are, and the fact that we are worm food and that we are dying is very hard to resolve. It's very hard to come to terms with. So Ernest is saying that we are scared of death. If somebody says, I don't care about death, then that person is simply repressing the fear of death. Ernest quotes in the book, The idea of death, the fear of it, haunts the human animal like nothing else. It is a mainspring of human activity. Activity designed largely to avoid the fatality of death, to overcome it by denying in some way that it is the final destiny for men, end quote. So what Ernest is saying here is that the idea of death comes with such high levels of anxiety and fear that we repress the idea of death. We deny death. We deny it because, come on, we have to function as human beings. We can't live to be anxious all the time, uh, thinking about dying, thinking about death, coming face to face with the possibility that, okay, fine, maybe it, it, it all is meaningless in the end. We can't live being totally nihilistic 24-7. But Ernest, he also takes an extra se step. And he goes on to say that you don't only fear death, but you fear life as well. Alright? Now things are becoming confusing, but see it from this perspective. We fear life and death because we fear the potential nihilism that comes along with it. Or as Ernest quotes, we are rightfully afraid of the totality of the universe of our most grandiose selves. The reason being that there is just too much to take in. The feeling of overwhelming awe, wonder and fear in the face of creation. We also fear our mo own most grandiose selves. Why are we here? Who are we? What are we doing here? What is our mission? Our own existence is just as incomprehensible. End quote. So what Ernest is getting at here is that there is this fear of meaninglessness, which is the reason why we fear both life and death. Plus, there is so much to process within our minds. The feelings of overwhelming awe at the universe, all this information, these wonders, these fears, emotions, questions and answers to life and death and everything in the world is constantly keeping us on our toes. It is even worse now that we got the internet and we have to go through all this information, information that is being met at faster rates than ever before and that will only become faster with time. 
Ernest also thinks that we shape things such as behavior, morals, and cultures around the idea of death. Okay? He says that things such as culture makes us feel as if we have some importance, some belonging, that it helps us forget how insignificant we are. Becker also talks about social constructs too and he quotes, Man must always imagine and believe in a second reality or a better world than the one that is given to him by nature, end quote. Becker goes on to state that we stick to ideologies too because it makes us feel important, powerful, and that this power gives us some sort of in in entitlement to hurt others that have views that don't match ours. Becker thinks that the only way to truly understand the human condition is to see everything as interconnected and that when it comes to things like religion, we cannot understand it without understanding the psychology behind it. Becker says that everybody hopes to live a meaningful life. There is that void within us when we think that we are just born to die. So obviously, to avoid this feeling of emptiness, to get away from that feeling of having that void within us, we search for purpose and meaning in everything. We like to embrace as much as we can. We like to brace the things that or conceptualize us, such as, you know, philosophy, religion, nationality, political ideologies, careers, and so on and so forth. We choose to stick to these systems because it gives us meaning. But there needs to be a moral to all of this. I mean, it can't be all this depressing, right? There is no meaning. We stick to meanings. We want to be something in life. We want to be heroes. It seems all depressing. Becker argues that we need to be brave and accept that nothing lasts forever. The denial of death tells us that we have to accept that one day we are going to die and that none of this will matter. This is all we have and we should make the most out of it. Becker also talks about transcending yourself, that we need to transcend ourselves. He tells his readers that we should take a deeper look into these man-made cultural norms that rule over our lives. Such social constructs such as politics, religions, laws and other organized systems, they take advantage of our fear of life and death. These social constructs makes us storm everywhere and we become confused as to where we belong, whether or not we are worth belonging to anything or not. We even allow ourselves to be created in our leader's image, these leaders that make chess pieces out of us and we blindly follow them. But Becker insists that we do belong to something that lasts forever. And these things, they might not be nameable, they might not be touchable, they not might be uh, comprehensible. But we do belong to something. We should embrace the person we are. We should accept the truth of what we are. Instead of trying to chase something that doesn't really exist, we should accept our own nature, our true nature. Becker wants to remind us about something important too. He wants us to know that we are the only creatures that understand mortality and death. If we analyze other animals, we find that they are focused on survival and they do not pay attention to their unavoidable deaths. But when we see ourselves, when we analyze human nature, we want to leave a mark. We see that we want to leave a legacy, that we want to give our existence an everlasting feel, even after we are gone. However, not many people think that we are already leaving our marks by just existing and being here. And that pretty much sums up the key ideas in the book. I hope you learned something useful and if you did, be sure to comment, subscribe like and share this with others too. I hope you guys catch me in the next video. Until then, see you soon.